I'm Kevin Davey with Peter Allen and Gold Dot Beer, and here is your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. With cold IPA, what I would use is a certain amount of Magnum, German Magnum hops, because we had that around, and a CO2 extract of just straight bittering compound to get the wort to about 35 BUs right at the beginning of the boil. I wanted to have a lot of bitterness in there already before I did my late editions, before I did my Whirlpool editions. Mainly because I, I have this old school thought that the bitterness from some hops isn't as pleasant as the bitterness of other hops. And so if I can lock in my bitterness with a pleasant bitterness, then I'm not going to solubilize that. I'm going to be solubilized morals. That might be a bunch of voodoo. I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. So I lock in the bitterness early and then I add 10 minute editions, Whirlpool editions, usually a blend of a couple different hops. Hops that I know are going to be good to add early in the process. My goal is to lock in the bitterness early and to focus on hops that have high survivable compounds for late editions and also Whirlpool editions. I like to add a blend of both. Some of these hops that maybe even have like a tropical element, I don't want to add them in the dry hop. I actually add, want to add them in the kettle because there are other elements that when you boil the hops, you're going to get. I think it's kind of a misnomer that whatever is on the hop that you smell and you rub is that's exactly what we want to put in the beer. The hop oils change during fermentation and during boil, and you need some of that element in your beer to make it more nuanced and interesting. And you're only going to do that by classic ways of brewing beer, which isn't just adding the flavor in the fermenter, but actually boiling the damn thing. So boil it. Add some hops during boiling, add them during whirlpool, get some of those survivable compounds into the wort stream. It's going to make the beer more interesting. We went so far as to even using what was called like a dip hop, where we would add hops into the fermenter and then cool the wort in on top of it. We found that that was a really great way to get some of those survivable compounds in there. Then fermentation would take off. We didn't have to worry about, since it was cold side that we did those dip hop, or that cold side fermentation hop. We got a lot of those survival compounds. We also got the enzyme from the hop kiln in there already. So if we're gonna have hop creep, it's already in the fermenter. Here we go. It would ferment down to where, you know, about 77, 80% apparent degree of fermentation. We would then dry hop it and spoon the beer. So we'd close up the tank, set the tank at 15 PSI and have our blow off device ferment it on the hops. And I think in the past I've said, I believe that this creates a certain amount of biotransformation. I don't know, the jury's still out on that, or I don't really know, I'm not much of a hop scientist, but that was the goal is to get some of that fermentation hop flavor. It also, you want to do this warm. You want to ferment cold IPA warm. I would say the coolest you should do it is 62. You could go all the way up to 68 with a lager yeast. You want those hops, that hop oil and the dry hops themselves to be warm when you dry hop. If you dry hop at 45 degrees when it's cold, it's going to be a different element. And you definitely want to get the high hoppy flavor. You're trying to solubilize those hop oils and that has to be done warm. To learn more about brewing cold IPA, click the link below.